we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father of Blessings, may this dawn's help become mine. I know your thoughts, your actions, even what your ancestors have done. Those dirty, filthy sins help us to realize that according to what I've planted, that's what comes back. With thorough repentance, may I find myself. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. You may think, oh, you know, this incredible promise, you reap what you sow. You suffering, it's because of what your ancestors have planted. Your, the parents may believe in Jesus, but there are children who completely oppose it. Do you know why? If the parents believed badly, that's not faith. They just had these, they went to these fakes where they gathered like dogs. So believing in Jesus, they're ruined. And so the children see that and they're like, is there a God? Because the parents believe so badly. They're like, if there is a God, why is it that the embezzlers do well and we don't do well? But when I'm embezzled, it's because my ancestors embezzled others. And so now we're reaping it. But that we need to teach them that. But there's no church that does that because they they teach Jesus as a philosophy. So this dawn, God says he'll help. If you want to receive God's help, what is it we have to do? There's nothing but repentance. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, this is the only way to meet God. But fakes, they don't repent. So then what do they do? Even though they come to dawn service, you have to reap back what you sow. So the demons just keep coming back. That's what they keep recycling so you know some religions talk about reincarnation it's because these things keep coming back in other words what you've planted is what you're getting back so they know this but there's no way to solve it galatians chapter 6 verse 7 so if your ancestors have planted bad things the children have to surely reap that back so some religions they talk about reincarnation and the bible says you reap what you sow galatians chapter 6 verse 7 so if your ancestors have embezzled others then the descendants get embezzled if your ancestors did bad things the the descendants have to eat those bad things and if even after eating those bad things if they don't repent then they turn around and they get it back again and again and again but with forced out repentance those bad things disappear so my suffering disappears what goes down to my children that disappears is this our men what a precious promise this is so when i saw that on tv you know when when we lay hands and you know it comes out exactly why are you in there tormenting this person? Why are you being such a demon? Why do demons enter? It's because you don't repent. How can demons stick where it's clean? So this dawn, you have to guard your heart properly. That's where life and death is determined. You dying is because you didn't guard your heart. You living, it's because you guarded your heart. So Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, let's find that. So how thankful. These demons, these fakes, they don't know the workings of God and they say, oh, that's heresy. But now it's science that shows it. Psychology and these professors, they show it. So guarding my heart, whatever my bad things my ancestors have done, as long as I guard my heart now, that's all we have to do. Is this our men? So let's read together. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Amen. So whether you're a male or female, you know, you may not have thought that in your heart at all, but somewhere, suddenly you commit fornication. I didn't have that heart at all normally. You know, you think, no, that doesn't, that's unbelievable. But if my demons, that person's demons meet, if... If those demons had some connection in the past, then you partner up and you commit a sin. 
That's the world. And that's why fornication is running rampant. You know, that's what's being shown up. It's exactly according to the Bible. So in Korea, they say, don't, you shouldn't let the women out because they'll ruin their bodies. They won't let them out. Our ancestors, they knew that if they're let out, they'll sin. But they don't know why this happens. So God says, guard your heart. Your heart determines life and death. So if you're suffering, it's not me, but there's something inside of me that's causing me to suffer. Something's entered in me. So doing well, it's not me, but something else that has come inside of me that's making me, you know, go to hell and, and my children, for me, my children do bad things. So, he, so it says to guard your heart. Well, what heart? Let's find Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. So you receiving difficulty, this dawn, let's fix it. Science is now showing all this. But how is it that we still can't find ourselves? And that's why Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, it says to find yourself. This is an incredible word. So our hearts... Why is my metabolism like this, my physique, my face, my personality like this? It's because some dirty spirits inside of there. You can't find yourself. If you go to the seaside, there's a crab hiding inside a shell. The crab eats what's inside the shell and hides inside that shell. Because we're living a life like that, we're saying, Oh, my bad destiny. Uh, you know, I've got disease. I've got a bad spouse relationship. I'm stubborn. You know, you become someone who's so strange. So this dawn is when we can fix all this. Is this our men? So Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let's read it together. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So our hearts. Life and death depends on your heart. So what heart do we have to have? The heart of Christ Jesus. So how do you have the heart of Christ Jesus? Well, let's read verse 4. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Amen. So each person has to look on their own things, your sufferings, your disease, your bad spouse relationship, you know, where you can't stand your husband, you can't stand your wife, so you're always going out. It's because an evil spirit is inside of me dragging me around. Someone with the heart of Christ Jesus, they're one, one heart. So they have a good spouse relationship. They're happy, satisfied. Their children are obedient. If you have a bad spouse relationship, your children can never do well because you pass that evil down. God says he'll help you at dawn, but you have to guard your heart. What do I guard my heart with? Well, it's the heart of Christ Jesus. By doing four-step repentance, you become godly to meet Jesus. That's the heart you have to guard. Then the evil spirits depart. They take the disease. And that's why Luke chapter 4, verse 35. How is it that the, as the demons depart, the disease is healed? Well, the evil spirits come in and cause your personality and disease, but that all departs. And so you become someone different. That's when you find yourself. So how is it we have this heart of Christ Jesus? Verse 4, it says, you look upon yourself and then you, you have all those demons exactly of your ancestors. So let's say you embezzled someone. Well, that person who receives so much bitterness from that, that demon enters me. So my parents may have harmed others. So then that demon comes inside of me so that I am now harmed by other people. So if you have disease, whatever your personality, God says you reap what you sow. So according to what you sinned, that demon will enter according to your sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. That's what is inside of me. So other religions... They try to do all sorts of things to cast this out or to empty themselves. If you empty yourself, then eight demons enter. Matthew chapter 12, verse 45. But if you wash with the blood of Christ, that sin disappears. When the sin disappears, your sins and your ancestors' sins, then the demons that have, were stuck to those sins disappear. 
So if you tear others down and you slander others, it's because the ancestors were, were treacherous and, you know, betrayed and, do, and did wicked things and you slander others. And so you can't submit to each other inside of Christ. But if you wash this with the blood of Christ and you cast out those, you cast out those evil spirits, once you enter Christ, that's when you find yourself, you find the Holy Trinity. But because you can't do this, you say, oh, that person's personality is like this. You know, when we lay hands, who are you? Well, at a certain age, you know, I had cancer and that's, that's the cancer they bring. If you resemble some grandmother, if that grandmother died because of liver cancer, that's when you die at 50. So when we cast this out, that's when our diseases are healed. Our problems are solved. We and our children do well. This is what God's given for us to do well. How thankful is this news? What does it say in verse 4? It says, look upon your own personal interests, yours, your ancestors, your households. And so when you repent of this, you find yourself, but also for the interests of others. So whatever appears before you, oh, this is so unfortunate. Oh, I, I'm so upset about this. I'm arguing or this is an enemy. No, you look upon that and it's for you to repent. What is being shown to you, all of those things, is it's for you to repent and to find yourself. So you have to repent of your sins and your ancestors' sins, but you have to look at other people's wrongs. And when you repent of that as your own, that's when those evil spirits, that bad luck inside of you departs and you find yourself. So when we look at the news, the newspapers, those bad things, it's when we repent and say, that's mine. It's when we repent. The more I repent, let's find Romans chapter 5, verse 20. So because I repent a lot of other people's sins, that's when I receive a lot of grace. Someone who's received a lot of grace, they have such a great love between God and them. And that's when they receive miraculous um, answers. So let's read Romans chapter 5, verse 20. So my sins are my sins. My answers sins are my sins. Other people's sins are my sins. It's when you repent like this. You know, I witness to you. When you say everything is mine, all those sins are mine. When you, after you say all those sins are mine, do you become evil or do you become righteous? Because you're forgiven of sins. If you do four step repentance, you become righteous. So if you're righteous, all of that, all of those people's wealth and blessings become yours. So when can you say that all of the world is mine? It's when you repent that all of the world's sins are mine. So what is the heart of Christ Jesus? When you repent with Christ, well, all of the world belongs to Jesus. That's why Jesus took all the sins of the world. Because he took all the sins of the world, that's why all the world became his. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. So because everything is mine, well, I belong to God. Because I belong to Christ. Christ belongs to God, so I belong to God. Everything that God has done, all those good things become mine. That's when you don't have a heart of wanting to steal. You don't have a heart of wanting to harming, of harming others. Because if you do harm other, others, then three and four generations will have to receive that and suffer. So, you know, our, our country is now investigating this and, and the universities are looking at the statistics. But if your ancestors had a high place, then the descendants don't do well. The more they did those things, the more the descendants don't do well. You look, that, that judge's son that was in America, you look at that pastor, you know, because of his ear, he was suffering so much. But after repenting with, um, by four-step repentance with tears, it, something fell out of his ear and his father was a judge. He thought that his father didn't do bad things, but because of those sins, the the he couldn't the he couldn't you know be a good pastor. And but after crying all the night, he was healed, and he's now witnessing this to others. So what is this saying? It's exactly according to the Bible. Romans chapter five verse twenty. Let's read it together. The law came in so that the transgression would increase. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Amen.
So if you realize sin, which is by the law, so the more you realize sin by the law, the more you receive grace. So you look upon yourself, you look upon your family, you look upon other people's sins. You know, when you argue with others, whether it's your sister-in-law, your mother-in-law, you know, because your ancestors have planted bad relationships, that's why it's like that. But the more you repent, the more grace you receive. That's what it teaches us in Romans chapter 5, verse 20. But if something happens, you want to go receive counseling. Instead of repenting and, and releasing it that way, instead of getting the heart of Christ Jesus and to find yourself. And that's why you can't stand your mother in law, you can't stand your daughter in law. That's, that's what, that comes back as disasters to me and my children. So something's still not being released. You're still not repenting. So if you're not, if you haven't repented, you hate them, you don't want anything to do with them, you slander them and condemn them. This dawn. Let's be released of all that hatred. Let's re- let's be released of not of of not liking them. That's when happiness and satisfaction comes to me. Whatever it is, let's be released. And this at this dawn, let's receive blessings. So, it's we've heard twenty minutes of God's word, and for ten minutes, let's repent and find those blessings. This is the heart of Christ Jesus. Who didn't Jesus forgive? He forgave everyone. That's the heart you have to have. To forgive everyone. That's the heart of Christ Jesus. How? It's by the blood of Christ. It's by four step repentance. So Christ is the mystery of God. Jesus is the mystery of God, the, the mystery of faith. So, so this dawn to make this mystery mine. My problematic personality, you know, I know myself, but why am I like such a, such a, like a man? You know, I know myself, but why am I like a woman? Why is it that I can't forgive others? I'm getting so irritated. I know myself, but why do I hate others? I know myself. So why is it that I can't stand to be with other, other people? It's because there's something wrong inside of me. Why is it that I'm not doing well? Why is it that after I do work, I don't receive pay? It's because your ancestors, you know, didn't pay others. It's what you've planted that comes back. Why is my personality like this? Because of the evil spirit inside of you. If if I change myself, do you believe your children will change? Let's all receive this blessing. And may we do well and our country do well. At this time, it will happen. Let's close our eyes quietly. Let's look upon myself. Let's look upon my enemy who I cannot stand and With the blood of Christ, let's wash and receive the promised blessings and pass it to my children. Even if I live like this, you you feel like you still want to give blessings to your children. Well, if if I wash my me, then as I do well, my children do well. A thousand generations receive blessings. At this dawn, let's all receive this. Let's call upon the Lord three times and pray. Lord. Lord, Lord, Father God, because I can't find myself, because I didn't know that I have to have the heart of Christ Jesus, that's why I still hate, I still grumble, still, still, there are people I cannot stand. Today, may we wash with the blood of Christ. May we wash with the blood of Christ and find myself. And just like Jesus forgave everyone, may we be able to forgive all. May I look upon myself. On May I look upon my ancestors and my neighbors and all around me. Still, because my conscience is seared, I'm shameless. May we wash this all away. At this dawn, may we receive help. May I find myself, may we all have the heart of Christ Jesus. And may we receive all the blessings that you've promised. I have to change. May our children receive these blessings. Why is my temper like this? Why am I so slow? Why am I so hasty? May we wash this all with the blood of Christ and find myself.